<clears throat> well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the East Midland Synod Prayers for Monday, the 27th of November. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. You have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. Let us pray. For the gift of his spirit, blessed be Christ. For the church universal, blessed be Christ. For the means of grace, blessed be Christ. For the hope of glory, blessed be Christ. For the triumphs of his gospel, blessed be Christ. For the, for the lives of the saints, blessed be Christ. In joy and in sorrow, blessed be Christ. In life and in death, blessed be Christ. Now and to the end of the ages, blessed be Christ. Amen. This evening's psalm is Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbour and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honours those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent, Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So, tonight's reading comes from Joel, um, and it's reading from um, chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, and then um, on to verses 9 to 17. In those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my innocent, my people Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Rouse the warriors. Let all the fighting men draw near and attack. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weakling say, I am strong. Come quickly, all you nations from every side, and assemble there. Bring down your warriors, Lord. Let the nations be roused. Let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, trample the grapes, for the winepress is full, and the vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will be darkened, the stars no longer shine. The Lord will roar from Zion, the thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the heavens will tremble, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion on my holy hill. Jerusalem will be holy. Never again will foreigners invade her. May the Lord add his understanding to our word this evening. And instead of the gospel reading, the lectionary gives us three readings each uh, evening to choose from. And so I've chosen the epistle tonight from 1 Peter 1, 1 to 12. This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ. I'm writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago and his spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him 
and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honour on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him, even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. The salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about the gracious salvation prepared for you. They wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance of Christ's suffering and his great glory afterwards. They were told that their message were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached it in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is also wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. Amen. So this um, epistle, this letter, is accredited to uh, the Apostle Peter, who is writing a letter to Christians who were experiencing a great suffering and persecution. Peter told them that they were not to be surprised by their fiery trials uh, that were testing them. Instead, he encourages them to follow the example of Jesus Christ, who did not revile or threaten his attackers. Peter wrote that they were to endure, to persevere, to rejoice in persecution, ridicule, suffering and even death as they shared in their Lord's sorrow. And to motivate them to joy and suffering, Peter reminded them of the hope, the grace, the promise of the internal inheritance that is kept in heaven for all believers through the Lord Jesus Christ. We are born again to a living hope because we have eternal life in a saviour who has already conquered death himself. The hope lives because it was set upon an inheritance that's incorruptible and that will never fade away because it's reserved for us in heaven. This is in significant contrast to any inheritance on earth. Everyone is looking for certainty and security in the world which is full of so much doubt and uncertainty. Peter shows us as Christians, we have a very valuable and certain inheritance that will be not subject to the shifting times or disasters because it's secure by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. So as we grasp that, as we allow that good news, that hope to set in us, let us too join with Peter's praise to God the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to listen to the, the song, Living Hope.
So then let us uh, come to a time of prayer. Holy One, you are the source and the creator of all life and you have made humanity in your image. We are awed by the wonder and the intricacy of the planet that you have woven. We rejoice in the beauty and its interdependency you have wrought. We pray for the places where our earth is scarred with global warming and your carefully crafted species are becoming extinct. May we seek to remember at all times that all this is yours and that we are called to be your faithful stewards. Faithful one, help us to live out our love and your hope that through our lives and our prayers, your kingdom may come. Holy one, you are Christ, our crucified and resurrected saviour. You have shown us the truth of your love and the way of faith. We pray for all who feel trapped by prejudice and poverty and for all who seek to build just systems in our world. 
we lift up to you the places of conflict in our world. Praying for peace between nations, people groups, in communities, in homes, in our lives. And especially at this time, we pray for a peaceful resolution to the situation between the occupied Palestinian territories and Israel. We pray for an end to the war and for peace to come in the Ukraine. And we pray for all those who live with the challenges of mental and physical ill health and for all who care for them professionally and personally. And so today we pray with Celia for her grandson Alfie. We pray Lord that the surgery was to able to go ahead today and that it was successful and that you would be with him in his recovery from that. With the Reverend Daryl Root, we pray for Peter, her husband, for courage, strength and peace and healing. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr, for recovery from surgery and strength for ongoing treatment. For the Reverend Hamish Temple, for Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her. For the Reverend Graham and Vera Mascury. For Father Andy, Moynier's Parish Priest. For Barbara Turner, recovering in hospital from a fall. For Janet Clarkson, as she recovers from her stroke. With Claire Abbey and Spencer, for Chris, who has cancer and is having specialist treatment. For Uncle Ter, for her friend, Beya, and for her friend, Madeline both struggling with illness. With the Reverend Clare and the Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter, Susie. For Cheryl and for Prince and family in their ongoing care of her. With Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. And for John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. And we pray for all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Especially at this time, we think of those who grieve for Jean Davison, especially her son, the Reverend Brian Davison, and their family. For those who grieve for Norman Bradshaw, widow of the Reverend Tony Bradshaw, and especially the members of his family and the church at Wellingborough. And for those who grieve for the Reverend Cecil Macaulay, especially Pat, his wife, and for those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially for the Reverend Maureen Buxton. We seek to remember, Lord, that every life is yours and beloved. Loving one, help us to live out your love and hope that through our lives and our prayers, your kingdom may come. And I've just seen uh, the message from Celia there saying that uh, Alfie is recovering from his surgery in hospital. So let us continue to pray for Alfie in his recovery. Holy One, you are the spirit of transformation and new life. You are the breath of life in each body, mind and heart. We pray for all those who hold leadership um, roles, whether in faith communities, in governance, in institutions, in businesses or across the world. We pray for teachers and nurses, artists and inventors, managers and carers. May all who shape our lives and our world be guided by your love and your justice. And gracious one, help us to live out your love and hope that through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom may come. In Jesus' name we pray, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And tonight's uh, collet 
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring us to the dwelling which your Son, all who love you. Give us the will each day to live life eternally. <coughs> Let our citizenship be in heaven with the blessed and with the whole company of the redeemed and with the countless angels praising and worshipping and adoring. Amen. And uh, the words of an old hymn. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no simple thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Christ, Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, come on by, whose breath our souls are raised from life to death. So, a prayer. In peace we will lie down to sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watches, as the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Amen. <coughs> so may the Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. So good night and God bless.